Join spiritual feminist and empowerment coach Joni Advent Maher for Trust Your Sacred Feminine Flow. Listen in for intimate conversations about money, transformation, and feminine sovereignty. And now, your host, Joni Advent Maher. Welcome to Trust Your Sacred Feminine Flow. I'm your host, Joni Advent Maher spiritual midwife and transformational guide. And today I'm delighted to welcome Casey Baker to the podcast. Welcome, Casey. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, such a delight. Let me tell our listeners a little bit more about you. So Casey is the founder of Women Speak. And through Women Speak has helped thousands of women from all over the world in becoming authentic, powerful public speakers. Casey is an international women's thought leadership and public speaking trainer. She's a speechwriter and two-time TEDx speaker and is renowned for her unorthodox but highly effective methodologies. She believes that the key to positive transformation in our world lies in supporting women in unleashing the brilliance of their voices. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I love that you're doing this podcast for women. Yes. Yes. And I I know that it, it also says here that you are a lover of dance, singing, and nature. That is true. Which are all things in my experience that connect us to the feminine and sacred feminine flow, frankly. So would love to welcome you and just hear about your journey with the divine feminine and perhaps how that connects with with your work. Mm, Thank you. Well, ah, wow, it's such a it's a, it's a beautiful question. It's a deep, far-reaching one. Um, I, uh, you know, I mean, for me, the word divine feminine, I didn't have a word for that for a long time to describe what I was experiencing. Mm. Um, I was in investment banking for many years. Oh, uh, not many years. I was in investment banking for a while after college, not many years. But then I was also in finance and I I really went through a period of, uh, it was in my early 20s, where I had uh, started seeing a therapist, a Buddhist therapist in San Francisco after I'd had a really tragic breakup. And at that time in my life, I mean, my life was, and I don't want to minimize what my experience was, but the focus was definitely on how I appeared Mm. um, and doing what would be impressive to other people and all kinds of external validation. Mm -hmm. And I had an experience around that time period um, where I had a a sudden awakening experience in August of 2001 that, that for me, I had no context for. Um, It was profound and it, it, it was a direct experience of recognizing the, the infinite nature of us all and the source of joy that lies in that and the this intelligence that moves through my body and is so filled with such deep grace and moment to moment to moment ecstasy and i came out of that experience just completely just how do I describe it? It's like, I mean, I just had my whole world blown open mm-hmm. and, um, and I had no description for it. I had no uh, understanding of what had just happened. Um, I had, uh, you know, I admit zero and, but it set me off on a quest to really come to open to whatever this was more fully in my life. Um, and it, it opened something inside of me, this well of compassion in my heart and this seeing and understanding of so much suffering that goes on in the world, but also just such insights of understanding the root cause and how things can transform. 
and at that same time, it was also the opening of just this, this, the, the glory and the, the, the profound intimacy that comes with, with dance, uh, spontaneous, like, like unchoreographed mm-hmm. in the moment, allowing my body just to be moved. And, um, and those things together set me on a journey. I traveled the world for many years and started exploring so many things. And what I can only describe now, years later, I mean, it was years and years and years and years and years later that, that um, I heard the phrase divine feminine. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, right. That's what this is. Because, because I had no, uh, it, the, the, the experience of movement in my body, the experience of this particular quality of my voice inside of myself, the, mm-hmm. this experience of the love and the compassion, this experience of the depth of sensuality that I began to open into inside myself was the, was the only word for it that I could think of at the time was divine. Mm. And, and, and I had grown up in church environments. I had, you know, and I had never had this kind of experience. Mm. Um, and it just became my whole world. I mean, it was just a profound love affair inside of myself that has only continued to deepen over time. And how this informs my work is that with this, love and this flow of deep love that is so sourced from within the body, Mm -hmm. from our body, um, there is a knowing and insight and a voice from within that sees and understands things that um, has been so missing in its input and its influence in our world. And so Women Speak and all the work that I've been doing, even before Women Speak was developed, it's a, it's a recent company for the last two years of women's circles, speaking circles, where they can go and have consistent practice to open to this within themselves and speak from that place. Um, but this work has been going on for years before that, privately in group programs, and I've taught all around the world, and I've been so blessed to do this. And what I've come to see is that that every woman, it doesn't matter what her belief system is. It doesn't matter what her religion is. It doesn't matter what country comes from. It doesn't matter what her ethnicity is. It doesn't matter her age. It doesn't matter any of it. Um, Every woman has the direct experience of this inside of herself. And so does every man. And, but, but the thing is, is that I do believe that with women, there's an extra hurdle that we have to go through inside of ourselves of, of, of owning the value of this voice of truth within um, because there has been such a systemic oppression of women and their voices in our world. So this work is so devoted to freeing that. And, um, and it's just, a, it's a journey that continues just to get deeper and deeper with time. Yes. And as someone who leads a woman speak circle, I would yes. say that exactly what you were describing about seeing this wisdom come through women week after week after week is it is uh, one of the most beautiful experiences I ever I've ever had. You know, just seeing the divine coming through in the wisdom, the unique wisdom of each woman is such a powerful thing. And it, it mm. truly is in, it is in everyone. And, and it has, it has been a, a huge gift to me just to get, get that opportunity, both to support women with that through a woman speak circle, but to, to witness it. Ah, so beautiful. Yes. So beautiful. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yes. So I know a little bit of uh, your story about like why public speaking, uh, because I've, I've heard you share those things, but just feel inclined to ask you about that. Like what, you know, how did it end up to be freeing women's voices that that that's where you ended up uh, settling in your work, so to speak? Oh, well, I mean, it was the, (laughs) It was the great suffering of my life. Um, I, I had this, and you know, this, as I mentioned, as we just spoke about this incredible deepening experience over many years of this opening to this, this, uh, this love and this intelligence within and such a deep desire to share about it, 
to mm. talk about it, to share the insights I was having, the understandings I was having, but the profound doubt in my mind, the questioning of myself, the, the questioning, who am I to do this? Um, the, 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 the sh residual shame around just that and also my body. I mean, all of that um, held me back from being an open, free flow of how I want to love, how I want to I want to speak up, how I want to serve. Um, mm. And also such a deep desire to want to be seen and mm. also to see from that place and feeling just so completely cut off. And I remember, I uh, and during my travels, I I had the incredible opportunity to go to the West Bank, um, in Israel. And mm -hmm. I mean, and it, 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 I'm so sorry. Oh, that was a big. Um, that was a very incorrect statement for me to make just then. Um, the West Bank um, in Palestine, next yes. to Israel. Yeah. Um, and and the. The, I spent about a week and a half there with a family of a man that I had met earlier in my travels that I had a really life-changing, profound love affair with, who didn't live there anymore. He lived in Sweden. Um, but his whole family was in the West Bank. And he encouraged me to go visit them when I went to Israel. And so I made the journey to the West Bank, um, even though all my Israeli friends and, and anybody else thought I was insane because uh, it was a dangerous time. But I had the most incredible experience being there. This family, 14 children. Um, the father had passed away many years before. It was The mother was elderly. All the aunts and uncles, everyone. I mean, it's just, you know, it's the village. And they um, brought me in. And I had been traveling for years. I'd never had hospitality like this. Um, mm. it, was, it, was, it was like I was part of the family. And mm. I became really good friends with Jehan, who was the youngest sister who was my age. And uh, she spoke English and was, she's just brilliant and loving. And we became fast friends. And uh, she like showed me life in the West Bank. And, and so one night she said to me, she started to share with me about her dreams and that she dreamed of going to a really great university um, somewhere in the world, you know, that there wasn't a great university in Palestine for her to go to, that she wanted to get a PhD in psychology mm. to come back and help her people mm. find a nonviolent way to deal with the anger wow. um, at the situation with Israel. And, and she wanted to be able to travel and see the world, but she couldn't do any of those things because she could not actually get out of the walls mm. of the West Bank which are literally like, it's like a giant pin. I mean, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable, the, the situation over there. Mm. And, um, and she says to me, you know, there are so many things that I want to do that I dream of doing, but I can't. I feel like I'm being punished by God in this lifetime. Mm. The only things that are available to me are to get married and have children and take care of my family and maybe work at a school. And it just was such a moment for me of, it was a life-changing moment. I mean, I'll always look back at that moment. It was a huge turning point where it was like, I felt like ice went through my whole body. Mm -hmm. And um, I realized that as an American woman, that anything that I dream, anything that I want to do, I can. Mm -hmm. The only place where I am held prisoner is in my own mind. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I knew it was my responsibility to free myself from that inner oppression and to share my voice and my wisdom and my gifts and the way that I longed. And I just had to figure it out. <laughs> and so I, um, I left a few days later and went back to the United States. I actually didn't think I would go back to the U S I had kind of, I was traveling the world and thought I would never go back to America, but I went back and that was a turning point in my life. Um, there's a whole journey after that, but, but a, a deep, um, unraveling began to happen and after that. And I, I began to start my, with, for me, my work originated in, in doing spoken word art. I was a spoken word performance artist. Mm. And, um, and my message was all about bringing awareness to what we were doing to the environment and, and the deep need of the rise of women's voices and the connection to that of those two things. And I had a following in San Francisco. We would dance and then I would do my spoken word piece and people loved it. And things just organically began to happen after that. Women just started coming to me saying, can you help me? 
Mm. Um, and that's how it all really began. So you just brought your light out and people responded. They, they shot, yeah. yeah, they were drawn to it. And yes, I, I know um, I'm compelled to just mention that you just had your first international festival for Women Speak. Yes, it was incredible. It yes, was incredible. it was. And just, yeah, all the wisdom that was coming through the various women who, who did talks there and your, your own wisdom. Um, it, what, it just made me think of that light, like being that beacon. And for each of us, as we are that beacon, then there are, there are those that respond and, and that can um, awaken or shift as they need to in response to that. So what a beautiful creation. You've, you've created a lot since that time on the West Bank. Mm, mm, yes yes i mean ah. <laughs> yes it's true <laughs> it's true it's true in so many ways i feel like it's taken on a life of its own and i'm just here to steward it and um just keep surrendering to the calling and the insight of what is needed and how to move forward and it causes me to grow in all these ways i'm consistently challenged it stretches you Mm, oh my gosh, deeply <laughs> worth it, and it's, a, it's yeah. it is yes, do you stretch? Yes, and I know that you balance also um, a business, uh, you know, stewarding this business, and you also have a, a young son, and so motherhood and work and straddling that. Is there anything you want to share just about that dance of? Um, how to be engaged in both of those worlds and, and still stay connected to yourself. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a real dance. Um, uh, I find that for me, the biggest things, uh, there's, there's, I mean, I, and I learn more all the time, but the last two years in particular have been a deep schooling around, you know, how to really um, source myself mm. so that I can show up um, for him and for my work and for the women I serve and my friends and, um, and my passions and, and all of this. And, and what I find, the things that make the biggest difference that are, that they, they just, I can't, I don't, they're, they're, I can't compromise on them at all. Um, is, um, well, I just have a lot of energy discernment on mm -hmm. things. So mm -hmm. for instance, um, I really had to take a really great look at w the people I was spending time with and the places where I was spending time. And was I feeling a drop in energy afterwards really, or was I feeling more revitalized? And I, I had to let go of a lot of relationships mm -hmm. where it just felt like more of a drain for me, mm -hmm. even though they were wonderful mm -hmm. people, just something in the alchemy just wasn't a right fit for me. Um, and what's beautiful is I've had a lot of other incredible relationships come into my life that are just so, oh my gosh, just deepen me so much <laughs> as a woman. And, mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's a big thing. So I'm very discerning about the relationships in my life and the listening that people hold for me. Mm, mm -hmm. um, I, 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 that's, I think one of the things that I am constantly having my attention on in myself and deepening into is my listening for others. It's the mm. core of what woman speak is about. Yes. You know, it's about public speaking, but it is absolutely equally as much, if not more about how we listen for each other. Mm. Um, that concept of fertile listening, listening for a woman in such a way that she cannot help but blossom in your presence. And, and that's, it goes deep. That's just not like, Oh, I'm just going to see you as great. Like that's actually a deeply, deeply, uh, powerful thing that to really attune to that as a deep value in our lives will carve us deep as a person. Um, and have everyone in our life around us really blossom. And so I, I offer that and I'm committed to that being a source for that for others. But, but I also am very discerning about the listening I surround myself with my, my life. Um, and I feel like that makes a big difference to be honest. 
um, relationships are sometimes one of the biggest things that people, we just don't realize, you know, oftentimes the, the either energetic enhancement or drain. And, um, so, so that's a big piece, but taking care of myself is huge. I mean, I, I am, I get great sleep. Um, <laughs> I just, I can committed to great sleep. I mean, I get eight to nine hours a night Wow. and, oh yeah, I'm so committed to that. And, mm. um, and I eat very well, very well. And, um, and I, and I do a lot of being in my body every day. Mm -hmm. I exercise, I do Qigong, I, um, have practices for supporting my, um, my, my life force energy, my sexual energy. Um, I meditate. I, I mean, so it's, it's huge. And some of those times with a kid, sometimes all I can get in is 10 minutes for one of those yes. practices, but it's consistent mm -hmm. and sometimes it's longer, you know? And so, so that Qigong makes a real difference for me. Um, mm -hmm. and being in nature, you know, I live in one of the most beautiful places on the planet, mm. really. And, and it's, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it is a, it is a, every night and every morning it is, I feel such profound gratitude for that. I get to be a steward of a, of a, of a gorgeous sacred site. Um, that is my beloved. I just love this land and I have for years. And mm. so, um, so that revitalizes me deeply. And, uh, so I feel, you know, there's just, just a, there's quite a few things, but those are, those are big ones, you know, those are, those are core. And I recognize that my, my connection, the, 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 the connection to the divinity within myself, which is always there, but my present focused awareness on that connection, um, and the cultivation of it is the most important thing in my life. Mm. Everything else stems from that, everything else. And when that starts to go awry, things quickly start to unravel. <laughs> so that's a, that's a very important, important thing. So I would say I, I resonate deeply with, with all that you shared and that, um, that devotion to your spiritual connection and source and in really honoring and safeguarding uh, the ways that you nourish that. I think we as women are naturally givers and maintaining that sense of connection to a source so there is that flow is is vital yes for being able to give the most or our best so that leads me to uh, i'd love to ask my guests about experiences with trusting your sacred feminine flow whatever that means to you so do you have any any instances of that you would like to share with us or things that come to mind? About, about being in the sacred feminine flow or deepening that? Like maybe, maybe um, I don't understand the question, just totally clear. Maybe ask one more time and I'll. Yes. So this, this idea of trusting your unique sacred feminine flow, and that's different for every woman, what even that idea means. Um, but oftentimes guests have experiences or stories where they can remember either a specific event or a kind of course of life where they really were in that deep trust and partnering uh, with that flow. And so that's what I'm asking. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, from, I can speak from my own experience that, um, the more that I, so the way that, that we, we explore this and like, for instance, in woman speak is being a movement, movement that is disconnected from any kind of performance mm -hmm. that is, hang on a second, I have to sneeze. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Excuse me. <laughs> ah, thank you. Um, so being in movement is uh, the, the, the way for me that I connect deeply to this. Um, and that is movement that is moment to moment to moment s surrendering into whatever that is, right? It, there's no performance in it. Mm -hmm. There's no, um, yeah, there's no performance. There's no, there, it's just opening to 
what do I feel now? What is moving now? What is moving now? What is moving now? And then the, the opening to that, the allowing of that, the surrender to that, there is insight and wisdom in that. That's the place where I go to. I always, you know, will go to that first and then do a lot of deep asking internal questions to myself of needing to know guidance around something or insight around something or, um, you know, really wanting to feel what is most true about something in my life. And the more that I trust that voice from within, the more I follow what it says, the more I listen to it um, and heed it, um, the more that I, that the strength of that voice and the willingness to develop and cultivate my whole life around it develops. So it's like a, it's like a strengthening, like a muscle that you strengthen over time. Mm-hmm. Um, and for a lot of us, we don't even recognize the value of that. Um, we aren't taught that that's even available to us. And, and we don't know that, you know, we have to, it's like, there, it's like that, that's a, oftentimes that voice and feminine flow knows the next step. It doesn't, and there's a vision, you know, we have a vision of something, we know the next step, but we may not have the entire strategy laid out. Strategic thinking is also wonderful, but I don't, um, I, 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 you know, to, to, it's like, when strategic thinking is instead in service to the knowing and to the wisdom that comes from within our feminine flow, then I think that that more masculine part of ourself is becomes in right alignment mm-hmm. with the feminine part of ourself. And so, you know, I think a lot of us that were taught that strategic okay. thinking, linear thinking, <laughs> I'm just going to let that pause for just a minute. Um, so, when most of us are, um, we're taught that strategic thinking or linear thinking is the trustable thinking. You know, that's the that's the that's where we place value in our culture. And so, this is a huge thing for so many of us to open into the voice of what you may call your intuition or the feminine flow or this deeper knowing inside. And um, and it's a it's a it's a very it's a, it's a profound journey to open to that and trust that. But the more you do, the deeper it gets over time. And, um, in my experience, there's a deep intelligence in it of our soul's calling, our soul's purpose, um, our gifts, how they're here to be given. And, and, but it takes profound trust and faith to trust what is the next thing that's going to come. What we don't have all the choreography laid out for us, right? You know, the next steps to take but maybe not the next 10. And, right. and, and so it requires a real surrendering into the present moment and, and, and unraveling the feelings of, of unsafety that live in us that, of, that comes from being in the unknown. Yes, exact, exactly, exactly. And I, I do think the ability to recognize, as you said, the value of this way or this form because it's not what is reinforced or what we're taught is the quote proper way or the right way um, it, it requires some dismantling to, to get to that place where we can rest into it know its power and its trustworthiness yes and I really one of the things I most appreciated from your talking at the festival was uh, the sharing that you did about the feminine brain or the female brain. And I don't know if, if you're open to saying, saying a bit about that, because I think it ties into this idea. Um, the female brain. Oh my gosh. I, I do love, uh, I do love, <laughs> Um, talking about this. Um, so the female brain is, wow, it's, um, I mean, it's, 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 it's such a wonder and it's so misunderstood. Um, and if we all men and women were just more educated on the uniqueness of the feminine brain and the uniqueness of the male brain, we would just have so the, the the world would just be such a better place. Um, it just works so much better. Um, so so the female brain. The big distinction to understand about the female brain versus the male brain is first of all that they're both just in their own right completely brilliant. 
and have their own incredible function and purpose. Um, so the thing to realize about that is that that when when a when a, a person with a masculine when when a person with a male brain not a masculine brain that's very different when a person with a male brain and there are some women who have male oriented brains right but mostly it's men um, who are males who are more males that have male brains um, and there's some you know there's a lot of different um, gender dif uh, differences distinctions fluidity. Um, in our, in our world. So I just want to be clear and say that there are exceptions to everything that I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit in generality in this moment. So for most people with male brains, um, a male brain, when it is thinking, when it is co uh, in contemplation, when it is coming up with idea and thought and communicating, um, there, it, it lights one section of the brain powerfully lights up. And that allows it to have just so much clarity of, um, of, of, of linear thinking, goal orientation, how to, you know, develop strategy. Um, it's, it's, it's super focused thinking that is brilliant. I mean, I think that, you know, when you have an idea and you want to bring it into the world, you need that. Definitely. We need that. Yes. I mean, thank goodness for the male brain or we wouldn't have like a functioning civilization. You know, I mean, that's, that's just the way that it is. But, um, but female brains for people with female brains, it's different when a female brain is in thought, contemplation, formulating communication, the entire brain lights up. Hmm. And that is a very important distinction. What that means is, is that the female brain has the ability to take a variety of different factors into account, uh, including like a feeling into things, that there's a value that happens there of a feeling into. It's a body-based feeling into things to arrive at insight. Mm -hmm. And that there are other factors that get taken in. It's, it's partly because most people who have female brains have the ability, you know, whether they choose to or not, to, to, to carry a child. And so we need the kind of thinking that can take into consideration impact on child, impact on community, um, you know, the, the needs of the community for sustained support. Um, those things all get factored in in that quality of thinking. Uh, it's what you would also call contextual thinking. It's the uh, thinking that allows you to contemplate an idea or a concept, but within context the impact on the context in which that idea exists. So, you know, for instance, let's, uh, let's, uh, you know, let's create something in the world, but okay, but what is that going to mean for the children, the environment, the family, the community? It's, there's a, there's a consideration that happens in the formulation of ideas and perspective that are related to that creation where those factors get taken into account. So it's brilliant. And the problem is, is that we live in a world that educates on and develops a male brain orientation. And those who have a female brain um, end up most of the time feeling like they're, the way that they think isn't valuable. And there's a deep misunderstanding of the value of when a woman takes a moment to really feel into things before she shares her ideas, that that is a profoundly valuable process. A lot of women think that if they have to take a moment to feel into things, they feel intensity of emotion. And if they have to pause it, there's a fear that they come across as stupid. They don't know what they're talking about, right? Or, or, or men don't understand that. And so there's a, a but rather, you know, they're more maybe quick thinkers, like driving ideas that women feel like they can't get a word in. Yes. And so this is all so important to see because when we understand that the value of both brains, that we can then start to really co-create on very high levels, mm. that we begin to recognize, and you know, a lot of women have a lot of problems uh, speaking up in environments with very masculine men, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's in group work settings or in relationship with a more masculine man, that that, um, but, but when a woman really can stand in and value the inner workings of her own mind, mm -hmm. then she can stand in that with full dignity. 
and she can stand in that with full sovereignty and she can take the space that she needs and speak owning the value of her ideas and value the need for her to feel into it before arriving at her idea. And that's recognized as a valuable process. And when she owns that, men will then recognize, oh, wow, something is here. It's when we, and it's, and it's education on both sides, but it really is up to us women first to mm-hmm. own the value of that and stand mm-hmm. in it. You can't mm-hmm. expect for men to do it for us. But when we do it and stay in that place and are able to also educate about this, undefended, undefended, just, it's just pure education to men. I guarantee you, they, mo- most of the men out there are amazing men. Yes. In my experience, the more that I've shared about this for myself as a requirement, a need, and something that is deeply valuable, the men in my life like, are so grateful to know because they just want to support. They, want to serve, they just want to know. Yes. They yes, just they want do. to know, right? <laughs> but if they don't know, yes. then we make them wrong. Yes. And there's, then you have a whole world of suffering between them. So, so, so this is so important for us to see and understand so we can value it for ourselves. And in Women Speak, what we do is we really support women first and community of women in embracing this, practicing this, owning the value of this, becoming artful with it, skillful with it, and deeply influential in how we communicate from this place. Then it's so much easier when we go out into the world with our other friends, our work environments, the men in our lives, whatever it may be, and stand in that place. Yes, it's that having that grace and the sovereignty and the ease in just authentically expressing who you are, what you believe, and what you need. Mm, yes. That's my experience. Mm. Thank you. I, I, I love that we could share that because I, I will tell you, since hearing that talk you gave, even just looking at my own marriage and some of the ways that you know, my husband may miss things in the environment. And it's like, oh, okay. I can be a little more gracious and forgiving that because I have a more contextual brain and I'm seeing, we'll say, a wider uh, perspective or a wider view um, that I may be seeing things he's not. And it, it's not, um, you know, it's, it's not something to be in blame about. So... Yes. I think it's really important information. Yes, 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 yes. So I would love to ask you, as I do all my guests, if you could talk to your younger self today from the wisdom you have, the wisdom of your years, what would you want her to know? What would you like to convey to her? Oh, I talk to her all the time. (laughs) I do. I mean, let me say that first and I'll tell you things I say to her, but um, I, I think it's a, it feels like a very important part of my life mm-hmm. and it has for years is the looking back yes. at moments in my life and whispering in her ear at certain crossroads. And then I have the same experience that in my life right now that I have an elder self who is doing the same for me all the time. Mm-hmm. And she's there for me to really get the wisdom and insight that I need. And um, and, you know, it was a trippy experience for me to realize one day that, 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 that oh, my gosh, that is my higher self speaking to myself. Mm. And I'm actually aware and doing it mm-hmm. a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. And so that, that communication is so available. And what I often tell, I just tell her, I tell my younger selves, keep, keep trusting those nudges. Mm. Keep trusting those nudges. Keep following. Keep following that joy. Keep trusting those nudges. Even if it makes sense to anyone else, just I promise you, keep trusting. It is going to it is going to work out. <laughs> it's going to be amazing, more amazing than you could have realized. Keep trusting. And that's my that's my nudge to her all the time. It's just keep mm-hmm. trusting those nudges. Keep trusting, following that joy. Trust that joy. Trust that inner knowing. Keep making those decisions even when it seems crazy to everyone else. Don't listen. <laughs> don't listen to them don't listen to them <laughs> listen to yourself 
Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, I went through many years of everybody in my life thinking I was a complete whack job. You know, I didn't, I wasn't doing stuff yet, like having a successful company or speaking at the United Nations or any of that stuff. Now, <laughs> now my parents love to talk about me to all their friends, but there were many years where they just didn't ever bring me up. <laughs> I was that crazy gypsy girl, you know? <laughs> Yes. Well, there, there's that idea when we are uh, the pioneers or on the frontier of evolution, then it does look different. It doesn't look like what everyone else is doing. It's true. Yes. True. Yes. So in asking about uh, you speaking with your younger self, with the, the girl within you, I would love for you to share about Girl Speak as well. Girl Speak. So Girl Speak is um, amazing. Um, <laughs> uh, so Girl Speak is the uh, not-for-profit arm that we are developing through Women Speak. Um, and we have been in beta around it for um, some time now. And we, I just led my first Girl Speak group. Um, but, and they got to speak at the festival. Um, but Girl Speak is essentially... Our, our public speaking and leadership practices that are woman speak style, but mm-hmm. for high school girls mm. and to support them in um, developing public speaking and leadership skills. But um, the two other big main things are also to support them in really creating a connection to the wisdom of their bodies, mm. um, to trust their bodies um, and to speak from that place and to also create very supportive, celebratory environments for high school girls to celebrate each other and being in their brilliance. Mm. Um, and that is huge. If we can catch, if we can catch girls young and help to transform this, this, you know, this long standing environment of competition that has existed amongst girls into celebration of one another, I I think that's going to change the world. And, um, and so that, those are the two other big things that, that happen for them in that. And, uh, and so with girls speak, um, we, so I'm, re- I'm running another beta program with the Sedona high school girls here before we roll it out again, like roll it out to the public, mm-hmm. uh, to women speak leaders to lead. But what will happen is that women speak leaders, um, who lead a woman speak circle and they've been in, who have been leading a circle for at least six months, um, will be able to apply to lead a girl speak circle in and get trained to lead a girl speak circle in their community. So that is a very exciting part of, of what we're doing. Yes. And were the girls able to come together and celebrate each other? And, and Oh really my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. What a transformation. You know, they were freshmen through senior. There were nine mm-hmm. of them. Mm-hmm. A couple of them were friends. The rest didn't know each other. Some of them were painfully shy yeah. um, and uh, had, you know, been told by their teacher they needed to come do this. And, you know, they come <laughs> in, they're on their phones. It's <laughs> not much eye contact. And by the end, of the six weeks and after doing the fest speaking at the festival they're all incredible friends um they can't wait to get together and hang out all the time um they are so connected you know i mean they're just so like you look at one of them and they'll just meet you right here right in the eye and they Mm -hmm. all have shared how you know since having that experience of doing the program um they're they just they're all like yeah i i you know i feel more ease in raising my hand and in class to speak up because i think God, I, I, I may have something important to say, mm. you know, and things like wow. that. So it's just really beautiful. And some of them have transformed epic, painful yes. shyness wow. um, into feeling more free to be themselves and to speak their mind and connect. And it's just so beautiful. So beautiful. Makes my heart sing. So as we bring this to some closure, what would you like to tell women who are interested in women speak and how to get involved or what would you like them to know? So with, uh, with women speak, you can go to womanspeak.com. That's W O M A N. And, um, and you can go to the page where it'll, you know, say, you know, become a leader or there's a section at the top that says leaders and you go on the leader page and there's a bunch of information about becoming a leader in your local area. 
And uh, when you become a leader, we it's actually free to get trained. It costs you nothing to get trained. Um, and we have an extensive three-week online training program with also uh, group calls um, for training. And then you are we set you up with all the marketing materials you need and your sales page and all that. And you can go out and fill your circle. And you make a commission um, on your circles uh, from your members' monthly membership dues. And, um, and that commission, you know, goes, goes up as you have more members and, um, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. We've got circles now and in many different cities we've got, you know, I mean, it's just, a. I think at this point our really active, active circles with members, we're at about 40, um, around the United States and abroad. And that's so exciting and we're growing like crazy. So it's really yes. wonderful. Yes. And I would put a plug in that, it will jumpstart your own leadership growth and development, just becoming a leader and being immersed in these teachings because they are very powerful teachings. And, and if you're interested in joining a Women Speak Circle, certainly go there as well to Women Speak. Yes, um, yes. And you can find a circle in your local area on there. We list all the circles on the circles page at um, Women Speak. And, um, and it is amazing. Go, I definitely highly recommend going to an intro night. Uh, all our leaders put on intro nights. You can go and get a taste of it um, and experience it for yourself. It's it's when people go and experience it, they are blown away um, and, at how and powerful sold. and incredible <laughs> and sold. Yeah, really. So you can go and feel it out for yourself and see if it feels true for you. And um, we highly, highly recommend go and check it out. Yes. And anything else that you want to share, add, offer for, for anyone that wanted to follow your work? Or I know that you have some um, in-person trainings coming up as well? Yes. So we have uh, a, a three-day, it's actually two and a half days, um, intensive program with me um, in Australia at the last weekend of June. Mm -hmm. um, and two in Sedona. There's one the last weekend of July, and there's one the weekend of September 14th in Sedona. And they're amazing. It's called the Foundation Course. Um, there's also information on this on the live events section of the Women Speak site. And mm -hmm. the Foundation Course is you're going to learn, come and study with me to learn the just the, the, the real heart of all the Women Speak practices and to get so clear as well on what is your core message. Um, what, are, what are the ideas that are at the heart of your message and the stories that you can tell to really showcase those ideas so they're memorable and how to then turn that into a powerful, effective talk as well. So it's all about opening to and trusting the in-the-moment intelligence of your voice and surrendering to that so you can be a powerful, spontaneous speaker um, and just trust yourself in any moment, but also how to have uh, support in structuring that um, into a compelling message. And I, we have an amazing time. There's always a lot of dance that's involved in Women Speak and doing, being in our bodies and speaking from that place. And the community is so celebratory and fun. I know, Joni, you've done it. And, yes. you know, be curious to hear about, you know, I know for you, um, when you did it in February, I guess it was a year ago. Mm -hmm. It was life-changing. It was, it, it connected me and opened me to the wisdom in my body in a more powerful way than I had ever experienced. And it, it, has, it has just created a momentum that hasn't stopped since then. Ah, ah, <laughs> I love hearing that. I remember your talk. It was so profound. <laughs> yes. Thank you. So well, thank, thank you. you for your time. Such a delight. Such a delight. Oh. oh, well, thank you. It was so beautiful. I'm so yeah. grateful to have been invited. Yes, yes, my pleasure. And I want to thank you, our dear listener, for being with us today. And until next time, to remind you to always trust what your heart knows. Thanks for listening to Trust Your Sacred Feminine Flow with Joni Advent Maher. If you like what you heard, the best compliment you can give us is to share our podcast with a friend and subscribe, rate, and review our podcast at iTunes.